Hi everyone. Welcome. It's day four at reInvent. I hope you are having great time. You're learning a lot, making new connections, and having fun. It's 3.30 p.m. here. This is the very last session between you and the happy hour. And we promise we'll make it worthwhile. We have a lot of exciting stuff in this session. Welcome to ANT 220. What's new with data integration? We have three speakers today. My name is Santosh Chandrachut. I'm the general manager for AWS data integration, consisting of AWS Glue, Afflow, and MWAA, which is managed workflow for Apache Airflow. With me, I have Sean Myron, who is the general manager for MWAA and orchestration. With me, I also have Nishit Desai, who is the managing director at Goldman Sachs, and together we'll be presenting this session. We have a lot to cover. Let's get started. I'm going to ask uh, my co-presenters to kind of take a seat. We'll be taking this presentation in turn after me, Sean will present, followed by Nishit. I'm going to go over the agenda. We're going to talk about why data integration is important and why it's a critical step to get it right to form comprehensive insights for your business. Then we're going to talk about how AWS thinks about data integration. What are its key pillars? We're going to talk about our key investments along those pillars. We're going to make lots of new excitement, exciting announcements today. Then I'm, then I'm going to pass it over to Nishit, who's going to connect the dots for you by sharing Goldman Sachs' journey on onboarding to AWS Glue and simplifying their data integration process. Finally, I'm going to conclude and share some additional pointers for you to double click after this session. We have a lot to cover. Let's get started. As usual, we're going to open up with our customers. We have hundreds of thousands of customers using Glue on a monthly basis. They come in all sizes, all form factor. They have different use cases. They're spread across multiple industries. For example, we have customers like BMW, who's, who's built self-service data integration platform using Glue enabling over 5,000 business users. We have customers like Aitau Bank, a leading bank in Brazil, who's built their payment platform using Glue and data mesh architecture. We have customers like Merck, who's used Amazon Kinesis and AWS Glue, and have built their ingestion and transformation layer for near real-time insights. Some of these customers also co-presented with us at this reInvent. For example, customer like Chime Financial, they share their glue streaming use case in our Chalk Talk. Customer like BMO, Bank of Montreal, they share their ETL modernization and migration journey to AWS Glue. Finally, we have customer like JPMC, who share their data quality journey using AWS data quality. We are thrilled to see so many customers sharing their success stories. One such example is BMS. BMS, Bristol Myers Squibb, is a leading pharmaceutical uh, player. They onboarded to Glue many years back. They have been using Glue over the last five years. Using Glue, they have built highly scalable, serverless ETL platform for their business users, because of which the drug discovery has accelerated inside BMS. Another example is GoDaddy. It's a global leader in web hosting and domain registration. They onboarded to MWA. They onboarded thousands of pipelines to MWA, and they've realized operational gains, stability, and they could get the scale that they could dream of. Here are some key, stop, key facts. We have, as I stated earlier, we have hundreds of thousands of customers using AWS Glue on a monthly basis. They are running hundreds of millions of data integration jobs on a monthly basis. We have hundreds of transformations, and we support 100 plus data sources for data integration. Now, with this overview, I'm going to change gear and talk about data integration. So why data integration? Why do we care? What's the motivation? Data integration is the very first step of connecting, ingesting, cleaning, transforming, 
combining, cataloging your data before data can be made use for analysis. This is the very first step that you need to get it right. Otherwise, you will not have accurate and comprehensive view of your business. Now, if you rewind 10 years back, data integration was manual and complex. You needed to hire specialized skill sets such as ETL developers. The data was siloed. The processes were manual. You had to run them in batch mode. The, they were typically run on nightly basis. Near real-time insights was not a possibility. Now, as businesses have accelerated their pace of innovation, they are demanding more from data integration as well. There are three ch things that have changed in the last few years. First, businesses are expecting up-to-the-minute insights to make informed business decision and get operational insights. That means data integration needs to run not in minutes, sometimes even near real time. Second, they want data integration to augment their critical business processes and operational systems. Data integration is no more an offline process. Third, they want more and more business users to participate in data integration process and enable them to, to do data integration and analysis. They want to have multiple tools that can enable their data workers to undergo the data integration process. So how does the data integration process look like? It begins with a motivation. It begins with a motivation such as you want to build an interactive dashboard. Then you start finalizing the requirements with your business stakeholders. You establish your data contracts. You agree, with you, agree the output with your data stakeholders. And then you start identifying the sources that you can connect to. Once you've identified the sources, the connectivity, the authentication model, you start bringing the data in. Once you get the data in, you start transforming the data, cleaning the data, removing the inaccuracies, and finally, the data is organized in a way such that downstream analytics engines and processes can be highly performant. Finally, you test, debug, iterate, test, debug, iterate. Many of you must be familiar with this. It's a highly iterative process. And once you're happy with the inputs and outputs, you start operationalizing them into a pipeline. You start building explicit SLAs. You start monitoring your pipelines. You start reducing your data downtime. You start to ensure data quality is of the high bar. It all sounds simple, but there are a variety of challenges. If you talk to business teams, they constantly complain they are not moving as fast as they would like. They are missing SLAs all the time. They are relying on central teams, and they don't understand why it takes so long time. If you talk to data engineer, they are saying they have to juggle between writing business transformations, managing infrastructure, and capacity management. The legacy tools do not scale as your data site increases. That results in them spending sizable time in analyzing their jobs, fine-tuning their jobs, and debugging their jobs. If you talk to IT department, they are saying they juggle their time between vendor management. There are too many vendors to manage, too many tools to take care of, and these proprietary vendors constantly keep prices every year higher and higher without adding explicit value in their tool chain. Many of you must be familiar with these challenges. Some of you can associate with all of these challenges. Now, let's talk about how AWS simplifies the data integration process. We can conceptualize data integration process in four core pillars. Number one, connect. We want you to connect to every single data source, removing data silos. Next, transform. We want you to be able to transform using preferred tool of your choice, enabling lots of data workers in your organization. Third, we want you to be able to operationalize data pipelines at scale without need to manage infrastructure and worrying about operational stability. We want you to be able to manage your data and improve data quality at scale. What we're going to do now is we're going to go through these buckets one by one. We're going to discuss the challenges. We're going to talk about 
what are the key innovations or approaches we are taking to simplify data integration. And then we're going to do some cool announcements. I'm also going to share for every, every pillar an animation that's going to connect all these concepts together. So let's get started with connectivity. Our vision for connectivity is to allow you to connect to any data source in a reliable, secure, and performant manner without worrying about cost. There are a variety of challenges. The first challenge is the new data sources keep coming up. Every data source have their unique way of connecting to them. The authorization model is different. The authentication models vary. The schema change is, is constant. The data models is different. That means you need to hire an application engineer or an IT professional to keep up with the new data sources that keep cropping up. Even if you hire the right skill set, there are hundreds of them. This soon, the days become weeks, and weeks becomes months, and your business slows down. This is not scalable. The second challenge that you face is finding the new data sources is an afterthought. The data discovery takes a long time. Again, the against the backdrop of these challenges, this is how we are thinking about connectivity. We want you to have access to broad set of connectors. These connectors can range from data warehouse, databases, third-party SaaS sources, uh, or AWS native services, open, uh, open table formats like data lakes, and streaming sources. If we do not support a source which is built into Glue Runtime, we offer two options. We offer you a custom SDK that against which you can build your connector. And once you build your connector, you can onboard it to Glue Runtime, and you can use across your data integration jobs. The second option you have is we offer a marketplace for connectors, which is populated by our third-party partners using the marketplace connectors. You can download these connectors in your runtime. When we were thinking about connectivity, we followed following tenets. For every single connector, we want to make it reliable, secure, and integrated. We want to give them the same quality bar in terms of security, access control, cost control, that would, we would offer for an AWS feature. We want to make it extremely easy for you to use. That means with just few clicks, even less technical users, no code users should be able to access data. Finally, there is no charge for using connectors. They are free as long as you run your jobs. That's what you pay for. Now, one of the common asks from our customer was, can AWS Glue natively support third-party data warehouses and database connectors? So I'm glad to announce that Glue now supports 10 plus data warehouse and database connectors. They range across a variety of, variety of connectors. For example, we have all popular data warehouse connectors ranging from Snowflake, Teradata, Vertica. We have multi-cloud connectors such as BigQuery, Azure, Cosmos DB. We have NoSQL database connectors like MongoDB. We have in-memory database connectors like SAP HANA. So we wanted to solve third-party connectivity problem for you. These connectors are embedded in our run, run, runtime. They get the same reliability, security, and performance characteristics that we have for other built-in connectors. Now, while we have supporting, we are supporting the third-party connectors, we also wanted to enhance the characteristics of our first-party connectors, which are our native services. One such example is Redshift. Redshift is our fast, fully managed, cloud-native data warehouse. With the new enhancements, we are better together with Redshift and Glue with this new connector that we are announcing now. With these connectors, it's easy to manage Redshift table across Redshift clusters and Redshift serverless. You can accelerate your end-to-end -end ETL and ELT pipeline by accessing Redshift metadata, Redshift table, Redshift stats, and build these pipelines in a reliable way inside Glue's runtime. 
Finally, this, this particular connector is very easy to onboard to. We're going to have some display later, but you can, you can simply have your ELT and ETL workload onboarded using Glue Studio. Finally, this particular connector is highly performant. For example, not only you don't pay for this connector, we are using Redshift's query optimization techniques to push down certain operations to Redshift cluster, getting you the acceleration and better price performance. Another example that we have is Amazon Open Search. Amazon Open Search makes it easy for you to do real-time log analysis, real-time application monitoring, and web search. We are also announcing a highly performant open search connector. With this connector, you'll be able to access open search indexes, perform queries on them, and also write data transformation and data task against open search data. Now, as you are all aware, LLMs have taken over the world. But ho however, LLMs suffer from the, the, the accuracy of their responses. One of the method to augment the accuracy is to use ragging techniques, such as using vector databases to put vector embeddings that can be augmented with your prompt inputs. OpenSearch supports vector DB natively. Using glue, you can enrich and transform data and create high quality vector embeddings that will improve the quality of your LLM responses. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play a small animation. This animation is going to display you how you can connect to MongoDB, pull that data in, join that data with your iceberg table, which is your transactional data lake in S3, run a bunch of transformations, and write that data into Teradata, which is a data warehouse, which is a third-party data warehouse we talked about. So as you can see here, we've selected MongoDB. You're creating a connection here. Enter your parameters. At this point, you can start creating a new job. You select the source, which is MongoDB. You select another source, which is Amazon S3. Then you go and start adding transformations. We support join. We support filter, which are all built-in transformations. Then you use the target, which is Teradata here. And you're done. Now you can start joining these data sets. You can even preview the output at each step along the way. For example, you can see the data in Amazon S3. You can see the data in MongoDB. And you can get your end-to-end -end data flow or ETL job authored in just a few minutes. So as I demonstrated, with this, you can author third-party data warehouse, you can connect to AWS native sources, you can connect to your multi-cloud data sources and form a coherent data integration story. Now we're going to talk about the next bucket, which is transform data with your preferred tools. There are a series of challenges here. First, there is no single tool. If you are a data scientist, you want to use notebook. If you're a data engineer, you want to use an IDE. If you're a low-code, no-code developer, you want to use visual drag and drop. If you're a business user, you want to use a Wrangler interface, such an Excel interface. There is no single tool that can make you productive. The second challenge that you face, as I described earlier, more and more users want to participate in data integration journey. That means we need to be able to share their artifacts across different teams as they are successively building complex pipelines and jobs. That means modularity is of a critical importance. Third, as these jobs start scaling against large data sets, they do not perform well, or sometimes they don't even run. That means you, you are trading cost against performance or stability. Against the backdrop of these challenges, this is how we think about simplifying transformation. I'm going to take a double click on this in the next slide. At the top layer, you can see with glue, you can author job using variety of tools. You can use 
Glue Studio, visual drag and drop interface for less technical users. You can use built-in notebook for data scientists. You can build a code editor for your data engineers. You can use APIs and CDKs and SDKs for operationalizing your workloads at scale. The next layer is transformations. We want to offer you as many built-in transformations as possible so that you don't need to write any line of code. We also want you to bring your own transformation. We cannot support all business transformation which are associated with the business data sets that you have. For this, we allow you a way to author transformation, register with us, and those are discoverable and consumable across a variety of users. You can even author a data brew recipe using your data brew, uh, our data brew tool. Once you author the data brew recipe, you can bring that recipe as a studio transformation. You can productionize that job. You can even put it on MWA pipeline and run your pipelines at scale. Finally, all these things are supported by our serverless engines. We have highly serverless highly scalable server engines. They can give you hundreds of nodes in just few seconds. That means you can do really, really high performance big data processing. They are also open source, so there is no proprietary lock-in. You can, you can bring this code outside of Glue and, uh, and use it somewhere else. We also support variety of modes to support your data integration jobs. For example, we support batch mode, we support micro-batching, we support stream processing. We support interactive processing. All these modes of processing get the same advantage that you have from the other parts of the Glue system. Now let's talk about built-in transforms. Glue now supports hundreds of built-in transforms. This year, we announced another 20 built-in transformations. Some of these are highly complex transformations, such as Pivot. Once you, are, once you use built-in transformation in your Glue jobs, those are highly portable. We maintain the code behind the scene. We make sure if there are better performance, best practices, we apply to our code. We also help you migrate your jobs from one Glue version to another Glue version seamlessly. So we highly encourage you to use built-in transformations in Glue. Now, one of the type of transforms that's becoming popular is SQL-based transformation. That's the new pattern that we've seen emerge lately. Glue supports SQL transformation built into Glue Studio. However, there is a new tool called DBT, Data Build Tool, that allows you to do SQL-based modeling, apply your business transformations, express them declaratively in a DBT project, and apply, apply them across your pipelines. Today, I'm happy to announce that Glue now supports DBT Trusted Adapter. What that means is you can include DBT Trusted Connector in your DBT projects. It will behind the scenes start interactive session. It will materialize your artifacts, create the tables, apply the transformations, and simply recycle the infrastructure. There is no infrastructure management to do on your side. It also supports the same SQL and transformation modeling that you are used to on Data Warehouse, on Data Lakes. Again, this is open source. There is no servers to manage. It's a very highly popular open source project. Just as customers like our horizontal scale, we can give you hundreds of nodes in a few seconds. Some customers have highly complex business logic for which Vertical scale works better. For this, this year we announced support for large worker types. If you recollect, Glue announced G1X and G2X workers many years back. G1X worker gives you 4V CPUs and 16 GB memory. But for some advanced workload, vertical scaling is required. For that, we announced G4 and G8 workers. With G8 workers, you get 128 GB of memory and 16 vCPUs. That's a lot of horsepower. Coupled with the fact that you can get hundreds of those, there is no data set that you cannot process with this kind of horsepower. Again, there is no servers to manage. It uses the same serverless infrastructure that we have. 
Next, we're going to talk about our streaming system. As I talked earlier, businesses want near real-time data insights. For that, sometimes you need to use streaming systems. We talked about Merck and Chime Bank using streaming system and enabling their near real-time use cases. Glue supports streaming out of the box. This year, we added three new innovations to Glue streaming. First, we allowed Glue streaming job to be authored as visual drag and drop job. Second, while customers love streaming capabilities that we have, many a time stream is not active. As user activity picks up, new events are occurring, the stream's activity ebbs and flows. For that, we invested in auto-scaling feature. With this auto-scaling feature, you would be able to simplify your infrastructure or job, uh, job DPU management. All you need to set is your max DPU behind a scene. Glue streaming will automatically scale up and scale down based on the activity in your stream. We also announced a one-fourth DPU. Sometimes the streams are, do not require heavy processing, but you still need to be having always on job, which processes in near real time. With this, you can have extremely cost efficient glue streaming capability for your data integration workload. Now we've done all these innovations, but we wanted to also enable you to start authoring job in half of your time. So we, this is what we did. We analyzed our job workflow. We analyzed the number of clicks that you need to go through to, to build your data integration workloads. And we did a series of improvements. For example, we simplified your onboarding setup. We are now offer you a getting started job, so you don't need to start from the scratch. You have the boiler boilerplate code already available for you. We allowed guided experience for your business users. We also now allow you to bring your DataBrew recipes from your DataBrew uh, site into Glue Studio and embed them and run as any other Glue job. We simplified your notebook getting started experience. And finally, we allow you to have responsive data previews as you're authoring your workloads and transforming your jobs. Together with all, with all these innovations, we've noticed that your job authoring time is reduced by 50%. Now let's take a look at this in near real time. This is Glue Studio. You're gonna click on one of the nodes. This node is doing transformation and preparing date in particular format. The format of the dates begins with slash, as you can see in the column there. Now we want to change it to dash. You can simply change dash there and you can start the data previews. As you can see, you can have interactive way of analyzing your work, iterating over it, and that gives you really an acceleration that you're looking for. As you've seen, we offer a variety of interfaces for you to be productive, your data workers to be able to authoring all these complex transformations. But there's one interface that's missing, and that's English. We want you to be able to author your data integration jobs and pipelines by simple English. Imagine you can say, move data from S3 into Redshift, ensure data quality, ensure that you do not have data quality misses, and if that does happen, do alert me. So I'm extremely delighted to announce generative AI capability in Glue with Amazon Q for data integration. You can author your entire data pipeline by NLP and simple English. Earlier in this reInvent, we announced Amazon Q. That's our generative AI assisted, a generative AI based assistant which is tailored for your own business data and operational data with high security and privacy bar. You get the exact same characteristics in, with Glue's uh, data integration uh, assistant. It allows you to, to also ask troubleshooting questions, which are, which are kind of trained with Glue's corpus of data, and they give you very relevant answers, which are specific to data integration. It also acts as an instant SME. So what we have taken is we've trained it on our support cases, 
and we've created a subject matter expert agent capability with Amazon Q4 data integration. I really encourage you to give it a try and give feedback. It's right now pre-announced. It's going to be available very soon. With this, I'm going to go to the third bucket, Sorry, which is how do I manage and ensure high quality in my data sets? You must have heard data lakes are becoming data swamps. There is some reality to it, because your data sources offer you incomplete, inaccurate data sets that if you do not curate or maintain the high bar, eventually proliferates into your data lakes. Now compound that by hundreds of data sources that you support. This problem gets, have a multiplied effect, and once you do not solve it upfront, the problems continue to become worse and worse. The second challenge that you face is with all the privacy regulation, you want to be sure whether sensitive data or PII data is leaking into your data sets. And once it's gone in your data sets and you've not kind of held the high bar, it's kind of finding needle in a haystack. It's quite expensive to find it after the fact. There's another challenge that you face is the tools that you get are very use case specific. So you end up dealing with multiple tools that you need to manage. You end up dealing with infrastructure management. You end up dealing with expensive management. You also have scalability and performance challenges. So you really don't have right tool chain to manage data quality and redact sensitive data at scale. This is how AWS simplifies the problem. We allow you to manage and ensure high data quality by embedding data quality checks for data at rest as well as in transit in your pipelines. We allow you to identify and protect sensitive information. We monitor and take action whenever these detectors detect sensitive data or data quality checks deteriorate. It also runs on our scalable, cost-effective serverless infrastructure, so you don't need to do infrastructure management or trade cost for price. You get right price performance. What we're going to do now is we're going to talk about sensitive data detection. Glue offers built-in sensitive data detection. That means you, we, we have 200 plus entities across 50 countries. These entities, once detected, you can either redact them, you can replace them, you can generate alarms, you can also mask them. Today, I would like to announce fine-grained actions for sensitive data detection. What that means is, with a particular entity that you detect, as an example, social security number, your action can be just keep last four digits of my social security number. With an email, it can be just keep my first and last, uh, last digits of my login. So you can take very specialized tailor-made actions based on these capabilities. Next, I'm going to talk about data quality. We offer data quality, which is built in. We have built in rules recommendation. You can start recommendation system, which gives you the right data quality insights. We also have a data definition language where you can specify your data quality rules in more declarative way. We offer data quality at rest and in transit. We also offer multiple personal support. Now, as you can see, Milcom, who is one of the customers who started using AWS data quality, they saw the robustness of our data quality feature. They applied across nine business departments. And as you can see, their data downtime got reduced by 50%. However, rule-based data, rule -based data detection has challenges. Sometimes your business reality changes, your thresholds need to be updated constantly. You have challenging patterns in your data that are not detectable by your human eye, and you have to spend complex, uh, you need to develop complex algorithm to solve the problem, and your, your time to insights gets inflated. For this, we are announcing today AWS Glue data quality that adds ML capability. With this, you can detect anomalies in your data sets. You can generate insights about hard to detect patterns, and you can create dynamic rules. We're going to see this in action by looking at this particular video by Alison Quinn, our senior analyst solution architect. 
I'm going to start the video. Here I have an existing Glue Visual ETL job. I want to measure and monitor the quality of the data that it's processing. So I simply add the data quality transform right after my data source. I don't have the time to add data quality rules and want to get started really quickly. To do this, I configure the new row count analyzer. This analyzer collects row counts over time and the ML capability learns from past patterns and then detects anomalies in the data. There are other statistics you can configure analyzers for too, such as distinct value counts, column lengths, unique values for all columns. For this demo, we'll just look at row count. I've run this job a few times now for each new data set and Glue has learnt the patterns of my loads. Now the disaster day comes. Our data file has low volume. With the latest features, I don't have to spend hours debugging the issue. Simply click on the data quality tab, observations tab, and notice Glue data quality has already generated an observation about the abnormal drop in row count. You can also visually see this from our graphics. Glue data quality can not only detect abnormal drops, but can also learn seasonal patterns and detect deviations from them. It has also recommended a rule to be added to my ETL pipeline so that I can stop jobs when such anomalies occur. I'm going to apply the rule I just created to my data pipeline by clicking on apply rules. Now I have the rule configured in the rules section that will continuously monitor the row counts for my data loads. I can even make these rules dynamic by ensuring that, for instance, the row counts are, say, greater than the average of the last 10 runs. While the analyzer will monitor my data for anomalies, the rules will ensure that any anomalies are detected and will continue to give me insights about my row counts. With Glue Data Quality, you can now combine the power of machine learning and data quality rules to deliver high quality data for your business users, enabling them to make confident business decisions. Thank you. I'm going to ask Sean to come here and present the next part, which is schedule, orchestrate, and monitor pipelines at scale. Thanks, Santosh. Thanks. Thank you, Santosh. And uh, folks, thanks for joining us today. Uh, Santosh has, taught a lot, uh, all, has talked about a lot of new amazing things to help you address data integration challenges. Now it is time to talk about our fourth and last pillar, and that's really about schedule, orchestrate, and monitor your data pipelines. There are some fundamental issues to um, reliably running data pipelines at scale. In some cases, it can be limited visibility as to what went wrong and why did it go wrong, or why is my performance not as, as I'm expecting. Um, they can be hard to build when you need complex dependencies between jobs and want to uh, leverage common parameters across jobs. Uh, often they lack the, the, uh, the flexibility you want. Flexibility around uh, timetables, around calendars, around time zones, around um, you know, what, what holidays are, which are different by country, and in some cases which holiday, holidays are actually different within a specific geography within a country. So they, they, they lack the flexibility to account for that to support your business. And finally, there's reusability, which is really difficult at scale. Like, you know, how can you build data pipelines in the most efficient and reliable way where you can reuse common components and you're not looking to reuse the wheel every time? Uh, Apache Airflow has emerged as a fantastic tool to schedule, orchestrate, and monitor data pipelines. Amazon managed workflows for Apache Airflow. As we, call it, as we call MWAA, uh, is a managed service for Apache Airflow that makes it easy to deploy, monitor, connect, and secure Apache Airflow at scale without the operational burden of, uh, of managing the underlying infrastructure. With MWA, you, you uh, define your data pipelines from uh, the hundreds of, of open source community available Apache Airflow uh, operators and sensors which include integrations with 16 AWS services and hundreds of third-party tools like Apache Spark and Hadoop. Apache Airflow has a really dynamic and vibrant uh, open source community and, and as of uh, last year, is Apache Airflow's bi um, biggest community by number of contributors. So it's constantly evolving with new features and new capabilities. MWA is, is built on this foundation of open source it's built on a foundation of security with uh, leveraging integration with uh, IAM, VPC, encryption with customer managed keys or with AWS keys as well as CloudTrail. Again, integrated with leveraging these, these, these 300, over 300 integrations available from the open source community. 
And then easy to deploy. You can deploy it from the console. You can deploy it from the CDK, the CLI, CloudFormation, um, uh, Terraform, you know, multiple different ways that you easy to deploy and use. And so Apache Airflow uh, and leveraging MWAA um, can really help you operationalize your, your data pipelines at scale. Uh, Airflow has a really rich user interface to allow you to visualize and monitor your workflow and workflow executions. The Python-based DAGs give you a lot of flexibility in how to support dependencies and relationships, either within a single workflow or across workflows um, within your data pipelines. Um, you can create your own timetables, your own schedules, your own calendars based upon the needs of your business. And you can do that at a workflow level or at a, you know, across all of your workflows and tailor that to meet exactly what you need. And finally, again, you've got over 300 existing integrations with, within Airflow today. The ability to take those integrations and customize them, the easy ability to create your own custom integrations, along with the ability to use um, you know, uh, parameters and create dynamic workflows, really maximize the reusability across your organization of your data pipelines. Um, in the last uh, week or so, the MWA team is busy bringing new capabilities, and we're really proud to have launched Apache Airflow 2.7.2, uh, which includes deferrable operator support for Amazon and MWAA. Upgrading to new versions of software is time consuming and hard. With MWA, we make this easy within place version upgrades and we launch new versions of Airflow at a really regular basis to ensure you have the latest features and capabilities. Earlier this month, we launched Apache Airflow 2.7.2, which included over 40 new features, including support for deferrable operators, which is a new way that allows you to um, uh, monitor for, for the completion of lo long running work in a much more efficient and cost effective way. Um, the, the introduction of startup and teardown tasks. So if you're using ephemeral resources, this is a way to really define and make sure that an ephemeral resource is there when you need it, and as soon as you don't need it anymore, it goes away, so you stop paying for it. Um, secrets caching to improve, or to improve performance and lower costs when you're using a backend secrets manager like AWS Secrets Manager. Um, uh, user uh, uh, interface improvements, um, more filtering capabilities, better search capabilities, integrated view with environment health, and, uh, and as well, so built-in support for um, open lineage. Open lineage is a open source uh, lineage-based uh, tool that allows you to track the flow of data over time and providing a clear understanding of where data started, what happened to it during its journey, and where did it, uh, what was its de destination. As well, we launched support for shared VPCs. Um, previously, MWAA was uh, only available in a single tenant service uh, VPC, which added cost and required permissions to both create of the VPC and the VPC endpoints when you created the environment. With shared VPCs, you can now create your environments in a shared centrally managed VPC. Um, and allows teams with different AWS accounts to create resources within that centrally managed VPC. This reduces the number of VPCs you need, reduces your cost, and also gives you greater support and integration with both AWS organization, as well as gives you the ability to allow the centralized creation of VPC endpoints that are used within your MWA environment. Uh, on the glue side, uh, we've expanded our support for Git, Git integration. Before Git integration, you needed to send up, set up your own integrations with your, with your uh, code versioning systems, and you had to build tooling in order to move your jobs from development and production. So we've expanded support for Git integration with the addition of GitLab and Bitbucket to the existing support that we have with GitHub and CodeCommit. Git integration enables you to track changes and manage versions for both code and visual-based ETL jobs as well as automating deployment, making it easy to integrate with your existing DevOps practices. You can also simplify creating and updating jobs while using parameters for sources and targets when you're using this with Glue. Um, for any data-driven company, having reliable data uh, pipelines is crucial. You know, when running properly, they give you the, the, the right information at the right time with the right data quality. However, with varying data volumes, characteristics changing, application um, uh, behavior changing, um, it can cause data pipelines to become inefficient and they will become, they'll slow down, they'll become unreliable and, they'll, and, and failure will happen. And um, 
you know, you've told us that you were looking for more, more robust and, and, and enhanced troubleshooting capabilities. So we've introduced new capabilities around enhanced uh, metrics for AWS Glue, uh, focused on reliability, performance, throughput, and resource utilization. So we've introduced an entire new class of CloudWatch metrics for your pipelines built on Glue for Apache Spark jobs. These new metrics provide both aggregate and fine-grained insight into the health of your jobs and also give you the ability to, to go in and look at the classifications of the errors that are actually happening within your jobs. This really gives you the ability to do um, you know, uh, detailed root cause analysis, look for both performance bottlenecks as well as issues in, in error diagnosis. And with this analysis, you can really find new ways to, to improve your jobs, bring in best practices, and you'll benefit from higher availability, better performance, and lower cost for your Glue Apache Spark jobs. Uh, well, Glue has great logging and, tele uh, and uh, telemetry about job execution. Interpreting it and, re and really understanding what's happening at a job level can take time. Um, and, and it can be hard to understand where resiliency and optimization opportunities lie within, within the job level. So we're really excited to have launched the Glue Serverless Spark UI, a new capability in Glue that gives you the ability to debug and optimize your uh, Glue Spark jobs leveraging a serverless Spark user interface. It'll give you a, a lot of detailed understanding as to what's happening within your, the um, uh, scheduler stages, tasks, and executors, and it makes it even easier to debug jobs and, and look for areas for optimization in how you're using Glue. And the most amazing thing about this is there's no setup and teardown time required. It starts in just check-ins and just works. So rather than me talk about it anymore, I'm gonna show you. So here's the Glue um, uh, uh, user interface, and you, you, so we've selected a, a run status, and you'll notice we're opening the Spark UI, and we expand it, and here is the Spark UI right inside of Glue, the ability to go in and look at your jobs, to look at the stages, to look at you know, the storage being used, to look at the environment, to look at the executors. All of this is available in seconds, and, and um, it, ha it comes at absolutely no additional cost. So thanks again for your time today. Uh, I'm going to now turn it over to Nasish Desai, Managing Director of Goldman Sachs, to talk about their experience with data integration. Thank you, Sean. Data-driven organizations. These words are simultaneously, let's sit through it. Uh, these words are simultaneously the most cliched and relevant words of our time, for a good reason. They mean different things to different people. Today I'm going to talk about a case study, a project, that in a nutshell will tell you what it means for my team at Goldman Sachs. The story features glue, no surprises there. But instead of just focusing on the, the how, the implementation details, I would also like to talk to you about the why take you behind the scenes and complete the arc, so to speak. So let's zoom in. So as most of you are aware, Goldman Sachs is a leading global financial institution that delivers a broad range of services to corporations, financial institutions, governments, and individuals. This organization has been around since 1869, and that, that's a great testament to the, to the trust and confidence that it has from its clients. I work for a part of Goldman Sachs called Investment Banking. And on Wall Street, that has a reputation of being a storied franchise. And when I say the word storied franchise, most of you who think of Dallas Cowboys, New York Yankees, your favorite EPL or IPL team, teams with a winning culture. And this team is no less. Investment Banking has this globally published rankings called league tables that stack up the various banks in terms of their participation on deals. If you take key products like M&A, that's mergers and acquisitions, or equity and equity link products, which you would know a subset of those as IPOs, Goldman Sachs is number one, number one globally. And not just this year. If you take a product like M&A, Goldman Sachs is number one has been number one for 17 of the last 20 years. You don't build this kind of a track record without a 
having the trust and confidence of thousands of clients across the globe. You don't build that trust and confidence without our bankers, who are the best of their kind, having thousands and thousands of touch points with those clients. My team and I build products and platforms that enable and accelerate these engagements. Now, when I joined Goldman Sachs many years ago, it was still pretty much a data-driven organization, but it meant something else at the time. At the time, our team was very focused on curating and acquiring vast amounts of data and presenting it to bankers as a competitive advantage. Simultaneously, we were focused on democratizing this data and making, giving access to more and more bankers. And that continued, both these things continued cyclically till we hit a point and we started getting some interesting feedback. People started asking questions like, is there such a thing as too much data? It forced us to take a step back and take a fresh look at things. It's like you're working on a puzzle board, and you're 80% there, and there's no way you are getting to 100% without move, taking out a few pieces and refitting them differently. And that's exactly what we did. We sat down with the heads of our business lines and figured out what are the KPIs and metrics they care about in terms of measuring these engagements with clients. We standardized those. Now, these KPIs are literally standardized for every banker. The same KPIs are used if you roll it up to their managers for them to view their teams, all the way to heads of business lines. The next thing we did was look at our data assets and distilling signal from noise. What I mean by that is filtering out extraneous data and and modulating the right uh, data sets. And what I mean by that is not just uh, figuring out what are the right insights to present to the bankers, but also figure out the timing and the placement of those. So there's a great book on this topic called Nudge by Richard Taylor. If you're not read it, I highly, highly recommend it. It talks about concepts like incentive schemes and trust um, architecture. It talks about um, all these features that we use to implement over here. The third thing we did was we hyper-personalized hyper insights. So if you worked in the enterprise and, um, and, and you would have noticed that enterprise software often lags consumer software in terms of experience. So if you're a banker and you're using an app uh, like TikTok, you use it for a week, and the recommendation algo gets so good that you feel like this thing knows me. Now, on the same phone, if you flip over to an enterprise app, you may not get the same experience. And that was not OK. So we invested a lot in building a personalization layer and building a recommendation engine that really uh, improved the experience. And the last thing we wanted to do was we wanted to deliver this on a single platform. So instead of fragmenting all this good stuff across different platforms, we want to bring it into a single place. And obviously, we wanted a simplified experience. Now, when we talk about simplified experience, we hear things like uh, great design is 99% invisible. But even though great design may be 99% invisible to the end users, that doesn't mean that behind the scenes, the, the data ecosystem or the service layer is anything but complex. So in our case, the data ecosystem was super varied and super complex. And this itself, as you can see, we were sourcing market data, news, transactional data, uh, reference data, unstructured data. This itself sounded very forbidding. Thankfully for us, right around the same time, our firm came out with this awesome product called Legend. If you've not tried it, I highly, highly recommend it. It, it gave us a way to model connect all these data sets and then also implement the right data contracts. So as you can see, we source all these different data sets, we stay and connected them in the right concepts, and we contextualize it for the bankers and then before it was available for distribution channels. And this is typically, if you look at it, this is the kind of life cycle that a data point goes through 
before it, re it results in an aha moment for the bankers. Now, as we were looking at this design, we knew the biggest challenge we had was our ETL strategy. There was a single unit of work that could actually trip us up. And there's a reason, and this is something that varies. The reasons for why ETL is challenging, where is organization by organization. I won't go through all of them, but I'll call out the, first, the second one over there, which is com complex processing and retry logic. So the banking data sets, if you are not aware, are very broad data sets. They're not necessarily deep, they're very broad. And there are components of that data set that are built separately, differently, they're published separately. And this could have been a big challenge for us. But this was even a bigger challenge for us because we were stuck on a legacy ETL stack that we could not trust. So at this point, if you're wondering how we, how we address this problem, I'm gonna play a quick video. It features Vishal Bandari, our, our, our lead architect. He's gonna describe how we use Glue to solve this problem. Thanks, Nishit, for providing the background and covering key challenges. Let me start by providing a breakdown of our ETL modernization strategy using Glue. We followed a four-step approach where we started by identifying different data sources, key transformations, and syncs. Then we prioritized our different workloads for the migration based on criticality and complexity. Next, we created helper utilities to streamline standard transformations and established glue connectors for our different data sources and syncs using firm recommended authentication methods. Then we ran our glue pipeline in parallel with our on-prem setup to identify any discrepancies. Once we addressed any issues or discrepancies we encountered during testing, we would productionize the pipeline. I will now cover our architecture and approach. We start by identifying different data sources and sinks needed for our use case. We leverage glue connectors to get data from source to sink to generate user insights. We use event bridge rules to trigger step functions which orchestrate execution of glue jobs to get data to target data stores. We leverage DynamoDB to capture job execution details like number of records processed, records which failed data validation, records in error, etc., to help us with reconciliation, and CloudWatch metrics to help us monitor status of all our ETL pipelines. We publish errors to Kinesis, which notifies our support function using Lambda event sourcing to remediate data quality issues and execution errors. Next, I would like to cover the tenets we built our architecture on. Business insights in seconds. Identifying high value data sources and then blending them creatively to uncover insights. Modular design, the main goals being flexibility, robustness and maintainability. Automate everything. Scalability, parallelize data processing using step functions, use micro batching, to process chunks frequently instead of huge batches, monitoring, and last, data quality assurance, having policies for data validation, cleansing, and enrichment. Last, I would like to cover the architecture for our near real-time pipelines to support time-sensitive business functions. Key components to outline here are Amazon MSK to stream data from on-prem and cloud data sources, Glue ETL to make the data available to cloud consumers via cloud native data stores and warehouses powered by Glue connectors. DynamoDB to capture job summary. Legend, which enables data producers and consumers to easily, quickly, and safely produce and consume data across the firm. Using these two architecture patterns, we are able to build our cloud native ETL pipelines that are one, robust and resilient, two, scale on demand, three, optimized for performance, four, cost efficient using serverless pay-as-you-go model with AWS Glue. Also, I would like to call out that we are looking to leverage two newly launched features to enhance our ETL pipeline. 
One, Spark UI for improved monitoring provides graphical UI to monitor Spark jobs and enables better troubleshooting. Two, job observability metrics. It provides reliability, performance, throughput, and resource utilization metrics to generate insights into what is happening inside your AWS Glue to improve triaging and analysis of issues. In summary, these new capabilities will allow us to better monitor Spark workloads, quickly diagnose issues, and gain visibility into resource utilization. This will help us continuously to tune and optimize our ETL pipeline. I would like to hand it back to Nishit to cover how the solution helped us achieve our business goals. Thank you. And now for the money slide, the key wins. 35% reduction in time to complete workflows, 10x data growth seamlessly supported, three, to, three months. This, by the way, I, I expected it to be a six-month project. We were able to wrap it up fairly quickly, thanks to Glue. The, the number of days it takes to onboard a new data set drastically down, and obviously 99.96% availability. I'd also like to thank um, AWS Solution Architecture team. They were super helpful to us throughout the process, constant companions. And at this point, I'll turn it, turn it back to Santosh to wrap it up for us. Thanks, Nishit, for sharing your journey with AWS Glue and connecting the dot for the audience. I'm going to talk about how we are accelerating our innovation. I talked earlier that demand on data integration is ever increasing. With that in mind, we are also accelerating our innovation. In last 11 months, we launched 70 plus new features. As you can see here, our feature velocity is accelerating. The number of features we are launching every six months are greater than we had for the entire 2022. With this, I'm gonna share some additional sessions we are at Thursday. Some of these sessions have already occurred. However, you can go back to the video and take a look at it. Finally, I'm going to share some additional resources for you to double click on. We have AWS data integration web page that you can get more insights from. We also have AWS databases analytics LinkedIn account. You can go there and get additional news about our new product innovations. Finally, I would like to give you a big thank you. Thanks for listening to our presentation. I would like to thank my co-presenter, Sean and Nishit, for coming here and presenting with me. Thank you. <laughs>